That you see there in the end zone, that's the place where one of many different times this afternoon, it seemed like the Texans had finished off the Steelers, but like happened all game long, yellow hanky on the field. Texans had not one, but two touchdowns taken off the board, another turnover taken off the board, and the Steelers still didn't beat them here. Texans undefeated here at home, giving up only 17 points at home. They did it against a highly respected Steelers team today. And Matt, the offense did their part, special teams did their part, and the defense I, for one, was absolutely appalled at the assault that Ben Roethlisberger put on this grass. I thought he had been through rehab. Quite frankly, what he did to this grass, violating it repeatedly over and over again, just should not happen. But how about that Texans defensive front? J.J. Watt making plays. Mario Williams with a couple of sacks. Sean Cody got there. Connor Barwin with a huge deflection. And at least the secondary made some plays when they weren't giving up the plays. You had Jason Allen give up some pretty big plays, one to Mike Wallace. It happened to be the one play that Wade Phillips said that Jonathan Joseph wasn't on Mike Wallace. Maybe that's a coincidence, but Jason Allen did come up with a uh, jack-up third down crunching hit on Heinz Ward. He also had an interception to seal up the game. And, and the great thing is the Texans won 17-10 to and they left two touchdowns on the field. They can still play better. The big question though is what does the offense do now without Andre Johnson? A knee injury could keep him out as, you know, maybe three to four weeks. We'll have to see on that one, but I'd say right now it's probably a pretty good bet he won't be playing next week against Oakland. Yeah, Bob went there after the game, talked to him. He said Andre Johnson will get an MRI tomorrow. At Johnson80 is his Twitter handle. I expect some anti-awesomeness on his tweet tomorrow with the MRI. I'm sure he'll violate team rules by tweeting that out like Mr. Foster did earlier this year. But Foster, huge. Eric Winston after the game saying, bar none, no questions asked. He agrees with me. Arian Foster is the best running back in the NFL, and a healthy Foster gives them the big play out of the running game they've really not had so far this season. So as Matt said, there's a lot left here on the field today. Literally, touchdowns were scored and called back. And even on offense, there were a couple opportunities. They ended up with one field goal instead of two touchdowns uh, traveling into the red zone. But they beat a pretty good football team. And I know our man behind the camera, Michael Connor here, in the Steelers locker room said, Ben Roethlisberger was very banged up, limping around, had a boot on, and readily admitted that Texans team they just played to him felt just as physical, if not more so, than the Baltimore Ravens, who are getting tons of respect around the league for that. We talked to Owen Daniels, and he said he felt like the same thing as at least should be happening if it isn't already. They're going to get a lot of respect for the type of football they've played through four games this year. And let's give a pat on the back of the offensive line as well. 150-plus yards for Foster. No sacks allowed against what's considered one of the better front sevens in football. Texans win 17-10, now 3-1 and in the season, tied with the Tennessee Titans for first place in the AFC South. Next week, the Oakland Raiders, pretty damn good team in their own right, will be right here at Reliance Stadium, and we will bring you all the coverage right here here on Sports Talk 790.